Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis chapter 37. And Jacob dwelled in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. Now, we've had an interruption in chapter 36 about Esau. And verse 27 of 35. And Jacob came unto Isaac his father in memory, memor, in the city of Abba, which is in Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac sojourned. That's down south. Along the Jordan River area, Hebron, and you can find it on the Bible map. I got the map to put it up, and it's very interesting as we get into this reading of that. And Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger, and the land of Canaan. That's the land given to Jacob. Chapter 37 to chapter 50 is all about Joseph. With the exception of chapter 38. Twelve chapters given to Joseph. Who is one of the greatest types of Jesus Christ in the Bible. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph being 17 years old. So all his brothers are, are older than he is. The two younger boys is Joseph and Benjamin. Benjamin is the youngest. So we set forth Joseph is almost 18 years old. I say 18, you know, you can vote, you can do this, you can do that. Joseph has one more year. Not that he can do it here in the Bible, but this is the age. Uh, I'm trying to think. Joseph was still in his mother's womb when Laban came in looking for his gods. No, it was that Benjamin. All right, let me just stop right there because. But here's Joseph. He's 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. So he's a shepherd. Jesus Christ is a shepherd. Jesus Christ is with the bedroom, brethren. Sadducees, the the uh, the Pharisees, the elders, the priests, with the people. John chapter 10. And we're not, I'm not going to be able to get all. When you read through the Mark, your Bible, when you see Joseph as a type of Jesus Christ, and it's, it's a great wonder. And the lads was with the sons of Bilhah. And we gave it in chapter 35. And the sons of Zilpha. So there's no Reuben, no Levi, no Judah, no Simeon, no Benjamin. His father's wives. They are his wife. Bilhah and Zilpah, even though they're the proxy like Hagar, they're his wives. Got four wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report, John 7 7. Jesus reports to God the Father what's going on. Now, I, Israel loved Joseph, that's Jacob. Israel's Jacob. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. And you ran that back to Isaac who loved Esau because of the venison. And Rebekah loved Jacob because he was a plain man. And it carried on to the son that he loves his son more than the others. And because he loves Rachel more. And Joseph is the firstborn of Rachel. And this is going to cause chapter 37 problems.
because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. Well, God loves his son more than all the sons of God by Jesus Christ alone. And here's a coat of many colors, and you've seen all kinds of different pictures. But there are 11 boys who don't have a coat like this. There are people of Israel who are not like Jesus Christ, like Jesus Christ was. And they hated him for that. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the priests and all the religions in Jesus' time hated him. Because not only did God love him, but the people were following him. He had the crowds. And this is envy, and we're going to see envy show up again. Pilate will testify to us through the Holy Spirit. It was because in envy they delivered Jesus. And they're going to deliver Joseph. And could not speak peacefully unto him. They had no good word about, I was going to say Jesus, about Joseph. And they had no good word about Jesus. You realize it gets to the point in the Gospels that Jesus is healing people. And they're getting angry. One man, his arm, he's unable to use it, his hand. And they watched on him because it's the Sabbath day. And Jesus said, you know, is it evil to do or is it good to do on the Sabbath? Stretch forth that hand. Well, let's go out and kill him. Hey, you'll be all thankful that guy's got two hands now to be usable. And Joseph dreamed the dream. This is how it happens in the Old Testament. They didn't have the written book. They don't have Genesis. The only book that would have been written by now would be Job. And they don't have that. We saw that in the last chapter. There's no written Bible. The only way God would speak to them is by dreams and visions. And Jews require a sign. So when you're in the church age and you see a 50 foot Jesus in your room. You do. I forget what that prophet was. That man of God. You take your equal and throw it at him. And it was Martin Luther that did that. Martin Luther proclaimed, I saw Jesus come to my bedroom, and he took the ink roll and threw it at him. Because that's not now. Those things are sealed and done because the word of God is written. You say, does God use visions? Yes, yeah, the Bible says, whereby we entertain angels unaware. But that is not our sole source as the word of God. Why did the apostles do signs and healings and all that? And then why did it stop? Because the Bible has been written. The Bible has been sealed. It's been done. And he told it his brethren. And they hated him yet the more. Joseph is in a bad boat here. He's got 11 brothers against him. Yeah. 10. These are men of the field. They take care of cattle. They are rugged. They walk. They run. They carry the sheep. They carry things. You know, these are not no whipples. And he said unto him, Hair, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. Someone else tried to copy that one. This dream. Hear my dream. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. And that's when you cut the stalks. You, you bundle it up and you tie it into bundles. So not only are they shepherds, they're also involved with harvesting. Two occupations. And lo, my sheep arose <laughs> and stood upright. And your sheep stood round about and made of means, you know, you're happy, you're bowing down to my sheep. Now let's look at chapter 42, verse 1. 42, 1.
And when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, 42.1, all right, Jacob said unto his sons, Why do ye look one another? The famine has stopped the crops from growing. There's no cereal grains. There's not even enough food for the, for the animals. Famines is a lack of rain, and with a lack of rain, you have a lack of food. 42.6? 42.6. And Joseph was the governor over the land, and he it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before, <coughs> before him with their faces to the earth. There's that first dream. And they hated him. And yet, here in 42, they're being fed by Joseph. They're being taken care of by Joseph. So, they hate me. And what they do to you may be something that God can use later on. And that's what happens. The stalk or the bundle. So Israel is a type of stalk. It's a type of bundle of, and we don't know what wheat or barley, whatever it is. So and his brethren said to him, "Shall thou reign over us? You going We're gonna bow down to you. You're gonna be the ruler." Well, what did Genesis 42 say? He was governor. You know, Americans don't treat their, their leaders of their nations and their states like the Bible treats as kings and rulers. You bow down, you show them. Re now, you're not worshiping the ruler. You're just showing great respect. Shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for the dreams and for his words. So let's look at, hopefully this one's right, Luke 19, 14. Hopefully this scripture's right. Error. 19, 14. Luke. In chapter 19, verse 14. He's telling a parable. And it's about God. But his citizens hated him. And sent the message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. So, scripture with scripture. 19, 14, with Genesis 37, 8. Who is this parable about? It's about the Jews. Now, when you run across stuff like that, and when we run from the Gospels, to the Old Testament, you've got to say those who studied the Old Testament, oh, we are of Moses, we are of Abraham, you did not see Jesus Christ? You were blinded. Where is Jesus Christ in the scripture? There he is. We just saw all these things that Joseph is a type of Jesus Christ. And yet Jesus said about them, you have ears, but you hear not. You have eyes, and you see not. And I'm not going to open up those eyes unless you do get right, because I don't want you to get right, because you don't want to believe. Those scribes who copied and recopied and make sure every single letter was correct with the scriptures. And they had rules and regulations of scribing the Bible, the Old Testament. If one thing was wrong, it went in the garbage, burned. If you didn't have the right dress, not one scribe went back into the Bible and said, hey, that looks familiar. Had they picked up Genesis, well, there was no chapter marking, but Genesis 37, what we have today, Jesus would have been more liked. 
And they would say, you know what, we're being just as bad as Joseph. And you say, well, how do you know that? Lord willing, again, if we get to Acts chapter 7 when Stephen preaches, I don't know if we'll get there, Lord Darius or not. We've already been through it. That's exactly what Stephen tells them about what the children of Israel did to Joseph. And he references back to Jesus. Stephen does the Bible study that they would not do when Jesus was alive. And what was their conduct after them? They chewed the preacher out and stoned him. And they hate him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. They hated Jesus for his words. You realize they couldn't answer one question Jesus gave to him, and then when he answered questions, the people were like, "Wow!" I mean, ought we not to stone this woman trying to catch him? And how he answered, they walked away. They had no words, and yet, and he dreamed yet another dream, and told it to his brethren and said, well, "We're going to get on good ground in this one. Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon." And the eleven stars made up things to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. This time you get dad involved. And his father rebuked him. All right, Jacob, Israel. And said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother, well, Rachel's dead. One of the other three wives has adopted one of the three mothers has adopted. You know somebody who adopted a child? Is adopted thy mother and thy brethren. Indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth. And you say, well, what is this going on? When you go to read Revelation chapter 12, and that woman who was on the 12 stars... Chapter 12 of Revelation is all about the children of Israel. Imagine that. You had to go from one end of the book to the other end of the book to find out what the first book said and the last book of the Bible said. So, J Jacob, Israel is a type of son. That would be type of God. The mother, the moon. And that's exactly what false worship is today. The moon goddess. Mixes with the sun god. And they have little babies called stars. Archelaus and, and uh, you know, the one with the three stars for his belt. Revelation 12, you see it's the children. The brothers are a type of stars. Now, how do you know that one? What was the two references that God always gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob about the population of the Jews? One of them was the stars of heaven. So when you run over to Revelation chapter 12, who is that woman? It's not the Catholic Church. It's the children of Israel. The Catholic Church is only stolen from the children of Israel. Jesus Christ and his brethren. Oh, there it is. Envied him. Matthew 27, 17, and 18. They envied him. But his father observed the saying. The Jews envied Jesus Christ, but the father said, I like what you're saying, son. There it is. This is my son who I'm well pleased in. Hear ye him again. Joseph, a type of Christ. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. I got a map and I emailed my family and I put it on the thing. Shechem is where Dinah was raped. They are going to go 48 miles from where they are to Shechem. That's going north. They're even going to go even more north into Dothan. They have traveled 48 miles north past Jerusalem, which is not Jerusalem, to where their daughter was attacked, and even further. 
Why? I don't know. Bethlehem had places of sheep. David was a shepherd in Bethlehem. 48 miles north, away from their father. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Well, he knows they're going there. Come, I will send thee unto, the, unto them. He said to him, Here am I. John 1 11, he sent him unto, unto his own, but his own received him not. I know where my I know where my sons are. I know exactly where. And son, I want you to go down and there it is. Well, the type of Christ. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee. See whether it be well with thy brethren and well with the flock. So check them out. How are they doing? God did that with the Tower of Babel. And God did that with Saul. I'm going to go check it out. I've heard a bad report. Now, there's no bad report here. I just want to see how that nation is doing. It's sick, Father. It is really sick. Diseased. And the sheep are not doing too well either. One time, Jesus, he looked at me and said, you, you don't even have a shepherd watching you guys. And bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, 48 miles, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. The field is the type of world Jesus Christ is in the field, walking around, all around the, the nation of Israel, checking out the sons of Israel. And seeing how they're doing in the flock. And what are, how are the flock? Oh, Lord, can you heal me of my leprosy? Okay. Lord, God, can I see with my blind eye? Okay. Lord, I can't hear. Okay. Lord, I got a devil spirit. Okay. The nation of Israel was sick and diseased when Jesus came. And the Pharisees and Sadducees were sitting high on the, if I can say for a Jew, the hog. They weren't taking care of the people. If they had taken care of the people like they were supposed to be taken, Jesus Christ would have been welcomed. Jesus Christ would have been recognized. Jesus Christ would have been approved. And Jesus Christ would have been their Messiah instead of putting him on the cross. Today, churches are, are, are bad. The rapture would happen, and, and Christians probably wouldn't even know what it was, is, what it will, what it will be. And when they, when they do end up in the clouds... They'll probably be angry with Jesus because they didn't get what they wanted and it was too soon. And I've been told that there's a hymn out there, wait a little longer, God, or Jesus. How sickening. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him. Behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked, and the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, I don't know if this is man is a type of the Holy Spirit. They are departed hence. For I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. That's a little bit northwest. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when he saw... Uh, uh, and when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. Matthew 27, 38, 26, 3 and 4. Come on, let's get rid of him. Come on, Judas. How much, you, how much do you want? There he is, another type of Jesus. He hasn't even shown up yet. <clears throat> he's walking to him. He's walking all over the place. And while he's walking, his brethren are saying, we're going to kill this guy. Isn't that interesting? And they said one to another, behold, this dreamer cometh. Yeah, but the dreams will come true. <laughs> come now, therefore, and let us slay him. Nice brothers. Let's kill him. 
and cast him and cast him into some pit. So we're going to kill him and we're going to throw him in a hole. And we will say, some evil beast has devoured him. They're going to lie. After they kill their brother, this is the plan, this is the attempt. Well, I sent Joseph after you guys. Where is he? I don't know. Maybe a lion ate him. I don't know. We didn't see him. I wonder what happened to him. And see what will become of his dream. So they're going to kill him because of his dreams. They're going to kill Jesus because of his words. The dreams are Joseph's words to the brethren. You know why you'll get persecuted as a Christian? Because when you speak the word of God. You got a worldly Christian, they're not going to get suffering. They're not going to get pillaged because they don't speak the word. And Reuben heard it. This is the elder son. And he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. Come on, let's not kill him. He's our brother. You guys behave yourselves. And Reuben said unto him, shed no blood. We're not going to kill him. We're not going to do murder. No murder. But I can sleep with my father's wife. But, but cast him into this pit that's in the wilderness and lay no hand upon him that he might rid him out of their hands and to deliver him to his father again. Oh, this throw him in this pit. Yeah, but within time, we'll come back and get him and, you know, let him starve a little bit. Let him be thirsty a little bit. Then we'll bring him out. But Still cruel. <laughs> when Papa makes us tell him what we did with him, then we'll do. It's almost like a ransom, kidnapping. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brother. He hasn't even shown up yet. <laughs> I mean, he's probably just walking and whistling. He's probably got a piece of uh, uh, a wheat in his mouth, you know, and they're like, Yeah, before he came. So he comes to his brethren and they strip Joseph out of his coat. The only coat that has been given by their father to him. That's the first thing. So when Jesus Christ is on just going to the cross, they strip him of his clothes. And one of them was his coat that they cast dice for because they didn't want to rip it. There's another one. And they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. It's a special coat given by Dad. We don't like him. And they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty, and there was no water in it. Type of hell. That lamb of that lamb that was to suffer and die on the Exodus night of Egypt was not to have any water. You were not to have any water with that meal. And Jesus, John 19, 28, says, I thirst. And they gave him no water but vinegar. Oh, there's another one. And they sat down and ate bread. Uh, Matthew 27, 36, they said they were eating a meal watching Jesus. Isn't that interesting? We are at Calvary. <laughs> and they're sitting down watching three men suffer. I'd be like, take, honey, let's get a pick your bags and make some sandwiches, get, get some macaroni salad, bring some Kool-Aid, and we'll get my daughter Rachel, and we'll go watch these three men get killed. What's one? Matthew 27, 36. Where they sat down and eat, or where there's no water, John 19, 28. Yeah, sitting down, Matthew 27, 36. They sat down and watched them. And they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites. Ooh, ooh. Here comes Hagar's son. The Ishmaelites came from Galilee. This is, this is on the west side. 
no, east side of the Jordan. With their camels bearing spicery, balm, and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. They're merchants selling all kinds of things. They travel from place to place. They're nomads and they make their living by stopping off, buying, and trading. And Judah said unto his brethren, Now, this is the one that's going to be the line of Jesus Christ. Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Why kill him? That killing, that murder is still in their thoughts. No matter what Reuben said. They are going to kill this boy. Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. And let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. So let's get him out of our hands. Let's hand him over to the Roman government. Let the heathen, the Gentiles, take care of him. All right, let's read 27 again. Let's get this one. Come, and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. Who said that? Judah. Do you know what the New Testament word for Judah is? It's Judas. And you'll even find it in the New Testament. It'll say instead of Judah, it'll say Judas. So Judah says, let's sell Joseph. How do you like that one? And then... Judas walks in, he gets his money, he says, listen, I betrayed innocent blood, he throws it down. Then they're passed by Mennonites, merchantmen, the same as the Ishmaelites. It looks like they married into Katrina, I'm not uh, Ketra. Mennonites. That's one of the sons of Ketra, okay? whatever her name is. And they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. Now, we're going to learn later on at the end of this, this chapter that they're going to sell Joseph to Potiphar in Egypt. Now, with scripture with scripture, with the assumption that you probably can safely say 99%, if they sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, how much profit do you think they got from Joseph in Egypt? 10 pieces. There's your 30 pieces of silver. I can almost I could I could almost safely say that would be 30 pieces sold to Egypt as much as I can say that Jesus is not born on December 25th. Because you know they'll make a profit. And it never says that, but scripture is scripture. And Reuben returned unto the pit. Where was he? And behold, Joseph was not in the pit. And he rent his clothes. Alright. Let's take another side of this story as far as Jesus. And Mary came to the tomb. The women came to the tomb. And there was no Joseph in that tomb. No Jesus. And they were upset. And the angel said, He's not here. <coughs> <coughs> he is risen. Mary stood by the sepulcher weeping, and Jesus comes up to her. And says, I don't know where they laid him. I don't know what happened to him. And he returned unto his brethren and said, The child is not, and I, whither shall I go? Well, the women went to the, to the disciples and they told, We have heard from an angel, he's not here. Now, it gets really bad here. And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goats. That was their father's goat. That was their father's son. That was the coat that their father gave to Joseph. These boys, these brethren, are not very responsible. They're wicked. 
and they are the children of God. And God says, pray for the, 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 the peace in Jerusalem. You're to pray for my people. You are not to curse them. You are to bless them. I will bless them. And you see what kind of people these are? Now, my brother and I, we've, we've had many falling out. I never wanted to kill them. Maybe a couple times when we fought as boys. But to kill and to lie. So they killed a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. <sighs> Disgusting. Dip the coat in blood. Exodus uh, chapter forty nine verse eleven. Genesis forty nine eleven. And this is an interesting. We've gone from Calvary. Now we're going to the second advent. How do you like that order? It says in Genesis 49, 11, Binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass's coal unto the choice vine. That's supposed to be Israel. The vine, the vineyard. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of the grapes. Exodus 29:21 Exodus 29:21 21. Exodus 29:21 21. And thou shalt take of the blood that is upon the altar and the anointing oil and sprinkle it upon Aaron and his son And in one last place, Revelation 19.13. Jesus Christ is our high priest. Revelation 19.13. These boys don't know what they're doing. <laughs> and do you know what? When it came to Jesus Christ and crucify him, they did not know what they were doing. And we'll start in 19.11 so we get the contents. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True and Righteousness. He does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. So when they take that goat and they take his jacket and they dip it in the blood, they're showing the second advent. We have passed from Calvary to Jesus Christ's return, anger. And anger at those Jews who still will not do right. Now, let's get, it's even, it gets even worse. So they take his coat and they put it in blood of a goat. And they sent the coat of many colors. They sent it. They didn't bring it. They took one of their servants that here. And they brought it to their father. They sent it by someone and they brought the coat to the father. Not the boys. If I were to say, my mom lives on the West Coast. And I had something for her. I would bring it to her on the West Coast. But if I'm unable to do it, I would send it by the post office. They sent it by somebody else. And they said, here, bring this to our father Israel, this coat of the blood. And say, this have we found. That's a lie. You didn't find it anywhere. But on his back. And know, know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew it, Israel, and said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast has devoured him. That's what they said in the beginning. We'll say some evil beast will devour him. But we'll, we won't say it. We'll let dad say it. Now, 
Joseph is without. And notice that expression now as we move through the life of Joseph. And when the brethren show up to Joseph in Egypt, he's without. It does not ever say he's dead. And yet, the servant and the boys know he's dead. No, no, no. Take that back. What am I thinking? There is no death of Joseph. And the Bible records Rachel died. Isaac died. Ishmael died. Adam died. Without. Without what? You know what Jacob or Israel should have said right at that moment? Without what? You found his coat. It's bloody. You didn't find him. And you got to wonder, was, did they tear up the coat? Make it look like an animal? Because it says, whether it be thy son's coat, no, he knew and said, it is my son's coat, an evil beast has devoured him. This is Israel's thinking. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. Jacob, you're still reaping. Didn't you come to your father dressed in someone else's coat? Didn't you come in Esau's clothing so you would smell like the, the wilderness? You had better wore your garments, Israel, and not Esau's. And Jacob rent his clothes. You find that Dan Daniel 6, 18. And put sackcloth on his loins and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons, the eleven, the ones that caused the grief, and all his daughters. Oh, look at that. He's got daughters, plural. It, it could be Dinah. It could be granddaughters. It could be, I don't know, even daughter-in-laws. Remember the rule we read? Somebody would say, well, the Bible said he only had Dinah. Well, he may have granddaughters by now. Rose up to comfort him. His sons came at that. Oh, I'm, you did it. You are wicked. You are playing out a lie that has destroyed your father. And you're acting like nothing ever happened. Came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. Get out of here. And he said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. And the Bible records that the sky of over Calvary went dark. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar. Like I said, probably ten, ten pieces of silver as a prophet. An officer of Pharaoh's. And the captain of the guard. So Joseph ends up in a house of someone who is in the political office and in the army. Because there's coming a famine and the children of Israel need to be taken care of. And Joseph could, oh, woe is me. Why are you doing this to me, God? And it'll turn out to be a good story in the end. He's going to make his brothers eat cold. Crow. But we'll get to that as we read on, Lord willing. 